Right, good morning. Um, I'm off for another ride. I've been off riding for a while. I've run a few little rides, but I haven't really done much. Uh, and I need to get my butt back in, uh, back up to speed. Um, so this today till about 20 past four now in the morning. Um, I'm off to a place called Compton Abbas Airfield. Um, the whole thing is about 200 k, so about 124 miles. I'm meeting a friend of mine up at uh, up on Compton Abbas for some breakfast, um, and then back home. Yeah. Uh, yes. So anyway, what's what's different? I've uh, got a new headset into my oh, sorry, right, well, a headset bearings into my winter bike um, on Canyon, which went surprisingly well actually, but they were a mess after, they got about 4,000 miles, they were an absolute mess. Uh, I've got a new couple of lights, I've got so many lights, maybe I should do a, 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 a feature on lights one day, I've got, I've got a lot of different sorts of lights. Um, anyhow, I was going to talk about, uh, on this ride, have a chat about Garmin Edge 1030, which I've got, um, how I use that and what I think of it. I've had the Edge 200, um, the Edge 1000, and now the, now the 1030. Um, and I've had it for a reasonable amount of time. I really do get them, try and get the most out of it. Um, so I thought I'd have a chat about that and about bike locks. I've got a new bike lock. I've got quite a few different types of bike locks. So I thought I'd uh, just go through the different types and bike security when you're on a ride, particularly a ride like this. Uh, when you're going to be a long way from home, um, you, know, you need to go to the toilet. You need to go and have a break. Uh, you know, what do you What do you do with your bike? So as we talk about those, um, but little bits and often, hopefully. Anyway, 20 past four. I set off at half four. Um, I get there about 9:30. Uh, meeting him at 10, so I've got a little bit of flex. Anyway, speak later. Well, the birds are awake. Oh, not warm enough. Kind of taking a bit of a gamble, but it's not quite warm enough. I thought it was going to be a little bit warmer, but it ain't. Never mind. Um, and Garmin has this thing that it calculates called performance condition. Um, and it's a number of, I can't remember it, I think it goes from minus 10 to plus 10. Uh, and it looks at your heart rate, your speed, power, heart rate variation as well. And then looks back at your previous rides and tries to work out where you're at. So it gives you a number, plus or minus, to give you a clue as to how you're doing. Um, and you'll generally go, and I generally start, maybe a standard will be zero, I suppose, but messing up. Um, but normally plus two to plus five, somewhere in that region, and you slowly, and you slowly go down, and then by the end of a big long ride, it takes into account fatigue, therefore. Um, so, end of a big long ride, you move you down at minus five. I've started at minus six. <laughs> oh, it's not looking good for me. Uh, and I reckon, I do wonder, because last night I had a bottle of wine and a Newcastle brown ale. That's not good, that's not clever, is it, really? That's probably the reason that I'm starting at minus six. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh well, we'll see how things pan out. It's not clever though to have to drink alcohol before you go for a big ride. Um, I've been, I've had a lot of fluids in me before I went, before I set off. I hope, I'm hoping that will, uh, that will succumb. Well, I won't succumb to the, uh, to the effects. <laughs> oh well. Anyway, bank port now. I've hardly moved. Fingers are cold. A bit warmer now. That's good. Here we go. We're a bit. Further in, probably about 10, 10 12 miles in now. Um, and that performance condition is now at minus five, which is, to be honest, it's how, how I feel I'm performing. Every time I look at it, every time I ride with it, so I've been riding with this for about a year, and it is pretty, pretty much uh, a good reflection of, of how I'm performing. Uh, if I go out on a, uh, if I feel real good, yeah, I'm up at plus five, plus six, plus seven. Um, but yeah, I don't feel particularly good today, so I think it's actually a pretty good uh, bit of kit. Temperature's about uh, 0.8 degrees, which is near freezing, but it doesn't feel that cold. Hands are all warmed up. Um, always go out for a ride uh, a little bit cold 
is a good idea. As long as when you stop, you've got something to put on to keep you warm. I'm taking the risk that I don't because it's going to be warmer today. But uh, actually, I feel a lot warmer now. Um, everything's waking up. All the birds nearly ran over a badger just now. All sorts going on out here. Lovely. Spring is here at last. Yay. That guy has been sleeping in that tent there for all winter. Just a little tent. I think we'll probably see later on. I'll get a video. Oh, the rabbit. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. See you later on. Uh, there's an area I cycle around the back. I think I'm going that way past Glastonbury. Um, and it's just basically all, all the way down the road, our caravans, knock it out old caravans, oh another bunny. Yeah, caravans all the way down where people have got a knock it out old caravan and that's where they live now. And there must be 30 of them down there. A lot more than they used to be, a lot more than they used to be. Used to be three or four, but now, yeah, about 30, I would say. Love living here. Great place to live. Great riding location. Anyway, yeah, I bought a new lock recently. I'll show you them in a second. I'll put them up. I'll put it up in a second. In fact, two two locks I bought. I was thinking about bike security, and uh, the only locks I've ever had have been this massive, very thick, very secure coil, um, probably two or three meters worth. Yeah, probably about three meters worth, which I'll I'll show you, and I'll put the weights up as well. I had that for a long time, uh, but then I found out insurance wise that the company would only insure me if I had a D-lock. So I bought a D-lock, that's massive. Uh, again, I'll show that and the weight of it. Uh, but they just really, they don't suit uh, the sort of riding that I do. They're good if I'm going to put them on my on my a touring bike or something like that. That's the sort of, thought, sort of thing you're going to take, but you're not going to take that on my S-Works. Not that I've got an S-Works, but if you had an S-Works, you wouldn't ride with one of those. They weigh as much as an S-Works. So, uh, I always worry every time I go and stop at a cafe or go into the public toilets or whatever on a long ride, what, what's my bike security like? So, uh, uh, one of the guys I follow on YouTube called Adam Watkins, uh, he uses a reusable tie wrap. It's quite clever um, because all it does is just stop someone really briefly, someone that opportunity theft, jumping on your bike, cycling away. Actually, he's going to have to work that out. It's going to take him 20 seconds, 30 seconds while you catch up with him. Equally, you can just get a strap, a strap that you loop through, if you know what I mean, pull it tight, just to lock to your frame to your, and your back wheel, uh, just around your front derailleur area. All good, all good ideas really. I thought there might be something a little bit better than that, so I do have that. So, bike security really is about, it's a risk isn't it? Everything's a risk that we do nowadays, assessing risk. Uh, so it's the probability of something happening versus the impact of it happening. So there are three things that I look at. The value, what is the value of my bike and that's not necessarily mon monetary uh, that could be I might be out in the not that I have been 
out in the middle of Europe and that's my only mode of transport with all my gear on it. So maybe a cheap bike but to me it would be very valuable. So it's value versus the probability of the bike getting nicked. Probability is down to the area you're in. If you don't know that area you're taking a risk. How many people are around? If only 1% of people would nick your bike uh, as an opportunity, if there are 100 people, you're probably going to get your bike nicked. <laughs> so it all depends on, what, on how many people are you, where you are. Uh, out of sight, out of mind. I do that a lot. If I go to a garage, even a 24 hour garage, even late at night, if the bike goes around the back area of the garage, uh, I turn all the lights off. I don't make it obvious. Now Noel's gonna nick it at the garage itself because they've just driven up in their car. They've got their, they're all on, on cameras everywhere on those, in those places. Uh, they've used their credit card, everything, you know. They're unlikely to do it. However, someone just walking down the street, uh, yeah, they might nick it. So you've gotta uh, consider those people. So yeah, I put it out of sight. I do the same at a local, uh, Public toilets I stop out on the strawberry line. Uh, I put it around the back of the public toilets. There's no way anyone's going around there. I don't think anyone's been, ever been around there for 20 years. Uh, other things when you drop leave your bike, how quickly can you get to it? If you're going to go to a cafe, uh, how far is the counter? You've got to leave your bike outside. Uh, you know, I want to be 10 seconds away from that bike. You're going to go to the toilets, how far away from the bike are you? There's a public toilets in uh, Western Supermare. I go in there, 20p. I take my bike in there with me. <laughs> oh, it's all fogged up. Where are we? Oh, there we are. All good. Uh, other things, all the other bikes around. So, if it's a tradition, if there are loads of other bikes, I put my bike there, I make sure there's a more expensive bike that's easier to get, and my bike is safe. <laughs> so, are there lots of bikes around? Are there lots of cyclists around? Leave it there, because cyclists are gonna look after your bike. And anyone that's about to nick a bike, and he sees any cyclist walking around, he doesn't know which bike is yours, which one isn't, so he's not gonna be stupid. So, it's value to you, the probability of it happening, and then the lock, you got to match the lock to that. So the two other new locks I bought, other than the tie wrap, the big coil and the D-lock, uh, I got so I think they're called cafe, cafe locks or something like that. One of them is a simple wire with a combination. I'll uh, put a picture up of that. I've got it here. Pretty lightweight, very small. Quite impressed. It's just a wire that pulls out, locks in, combination lock. But let's face it, anyone with a set of snippers is gonna snip that. But if they haven't got those, they're not gonna be able to nick it. So it stops the opportunity thief. I've also got something like a tire, it's, like, it's a tire wrap. Again, I'll show it. Tire wrap, not quite as light as the other one. Combination, got a metal strip inside it for security. You can cut through that, it takes a bit, bit of time, but you can get through it. But it doesn't matter, it stops someone for 30 seconds, for a minute, and allows me to get to my bike before they nab it. Worth thinking about. But there are also different sorts of theft that go on. So it's people going to, who are just out to nick your uh, your lights, your head, headset, your head unit rather. Oh, car. Car, at this time of morning. Yeah, so you've got to think about the Different sorts of theft. People who are the opportunity theft. Who's going to na nab your uh, nab your head unit? Nab your head unit. I always take that off. Lights. I always take my exposure lights off. Definitely the expensive ones. Uh, little lights. I just generally just leave where they are. Uh, so those opportunity thieves. That's easy for them. There's no real risk. Let's check. I'm going the right way. Yay! Uh, not much you can do about those other than take stuff off. But it's difficult when you've got a bike loaded with gear to do that. So 
a little bit of thought maybe put all this stuff together in one bag or have a bag i always everything goes into the helmet take my helmet off everything goes in the helmet carry that away uh, other theft is the opportunity grab a bike jump on it and cycle away um like i say keep it out of sight out of mind uh, have a little something that will stop them maybe a bit more than a tie wrap but have some options there and then the final one is someone who's out to steal bikes uh, they know where they know where they're going they know where all the bikes are all the local cafes they'll be they'll grab your bike doesn't matter if you've locked it locked just the wheels to the frame you're gonna have to lock it to something to stop them but they come with a gear in the back of a van and gone but you need a pretty expensive bike i imagine for them to do that sort of thing anyway my performance condition is improving normally it goes down but it's improving now i'm only down at minus three now minus two uh which is about right i do feel better temperature is now at freezing or it was at freezing you've got all the cold air sinking to the bottom of the bottom of the levels anyway it's turning out to be a gorgeous day i've just thought about the uh, that performance condition uh thing i was talking about it's probably down to dehydration because i was very dehydrated when i set off and your heart reacts quite quickly i think to dehydration and uh i've been hydrating loads before i went loads now i think my body's now recovered i feel better and it's just going up that number or well, it's just improving not not as bad not as negative anyway that's probably what it is aren't i clever There's just no one here. Fast road, empty. Oh my God, there's a car. Amazing. Okay, it's seven o'clock, and I've got three hours to go on me, Chris. Um, look at the roads like this. And there's no cars on here. In about three hours, this will be a reasonably busy road that I wouldn't be keen on riding. But I'm quite keen on uh, got this airfield, Compton Abbas. I learned how to fly there when I was 17. I couldn't drive, but uh, the Navy paid me to go and learn to fly there. It's a great little airfield, really nice cafe that I can remember anyway. Gillingham. This is real, what an amazing route. Through some really gorgeous villages, past some very expensive houses. It's an amazing route. In fact, instead of, I mean, my plan is to go up to Compton Abbas, meet Chris, and then we're going to cycle back to Compton Abbas, is basically over there, some hills, right up in the distance over there, you'll be able to see them. And then the plan is to go down that way, basically back home over that way but in fact I think I'm going to come back the same the same route a little bit more uh, hilly in terms of big climbs but when it's flat it's flat um, but it's an amazing route I was going to talk about my Garmin wasn't I I completely forgot about that and I lost my little bit of paper but uh, yeah so really quickly then um, so the Garmin Edge this is a 1030. I've had the 200 before and I've had the 1000 before. Uh, the Edge 200, real, real basic thing. It's just following a, a, a trail. Uh, this, obviously, it's got all the mapping, everything else. Compared to the, to the uh, Edge 1000, the big difference is battery life, which, which is a big winner for me. This is much more. I mean, the old one, I could do 100 miles just uh, on the Edge 1000 before the battery would be dead. This one, I don't worry about it. I could, I'd be. I'll probably get 200 miles out of this, um, however long that will be, I'm guessing. But uh, 200 miles, it's a little bit heavier, uh, a little bit wide, uh, taller, not quite as thick. Um, but battery life is a big one. Um, I would say on the Edge 1000, there were probably there were lots of things because I really do tend to use all the HMI side of things and all the features. Uh, 
and it had lots of gaps in uh, lots of things that I thought oh, I can't why why have they done that why have they XYZ lots of things that they, they just didn't do very well um, but I would say 80 to 90 percent of those things that I didn't like about it are all fixed in this thing now I'm really impressed with this but I have to say it's a love-hate relationship I love all the features the mapping's amazing the screen's really clear color is a really top bit of kit but it's a bit like buying a Micros. Do you buy a um, a PC or do you go for a Mac? PC, it's a, got a few, lots more features, uh, more adaptable. You can add things in, add third-party stuff in easily, but it's not as reliable. Or do you go for the Wahoo, which is your Mac, which is more reliable, but it doesn't. It's pretty. It's basic but reliable, I would say. Um, I, I've never had a Mac, so I don't really know, but it's what, I've, what I understand. Um, yeah, so I've had lots of problems with Garmin in that with a power meter not syncing with my stages power meter everything else worked with it. So my other head unit my um, Brighton Rider 330 worked with it uh, my Fen, uh, Fenex 3 uh, Works with my power meter this thing wouldn't Which is a royal pain in the ass, but um, I did lots of complaining to Garmin and recent software Seem to fix it so it's now pretty reliable um, it's dropped out on me a few times where it's just rebooted itself which is rather annoying um, however it doesn't dump the ride which is good it doesn't you know, it doesn't uh, you don't lose the ride that you've just done um, although there have been probably three or four times where in the last two years since I've had this two years uh, where it's just let me down and so I always have a backup so if I've got a big ride I got this little puppy, which is amazing, 36 hour battery life. Uh, if it's a short ride, I just use my watch. Um, but there we go. So, yeah, I've got some reliability problems. It gets confused if you've got a route that goes out and then comes back. Um, for example, today, um, my start point was near my end point, so it thought, it thought I'd finished. So it basically kicked me as if, oh yeah, you've only got 300 yards until the, until the finish. And then it decided as I started riding, oh no, no, you're off, but now it, hadn't picked up my all the course points etc so I had to shut it down start it up again equally yeah if you go out on the same route and come back sorry out and then back on the same route it gets confused um, sometimes it's a bit better than it used to be uh, with the new software so there are some downsides to it um, and sometimes the map can slow right down but I'll come on to the positives now because there are lots of positives which I really like Okay, what this is very good at, this uh, this Edge 1030, is navigation. Unlike the Wahoo where you've got to log in and build a route on something else. Well, you do have to, well, yeah, build a route on something else and then upload it to this. Everything is in here, so I don't need a phone. This is all I need. Uh, I've got no connect connectivity. It doesn't matter. This has got all the maps in there. There's a little slot I can put in extra maps so I can have the whole of Europe, the whole of the States. Um, there's tons in here, absolutely. Um, so for navigation, I don't think there's anything that comes close to these really. It also has third party apps um, called IQ, IQ apps. Um, so you can download them, uh, th yeah, third party. Um, there are all sorts of different ones in here and I'll just show you a couple. So one of them, if I put that there, in fact, that'll be a bit better. I'll show you that screen first. So that screen, uh, at the top I've got my power because this is my Audax profile uh, I just look at the 10 second power uh, I've got my heart rate uh, course point distance so how far to the next point so that has got a little cross by it uh, 2.98 miles uh, so that's taking me to Gillingham and that little cross for me I know that means the 24 hour services distance I've gone 44 miles ascent to next course point so I know I've only got 49 feet of climbing to get to that next course point and that is pretty accurate um, time to next uh, course point and then that wind thing there and I have to pay a little bit of money for that five pounds a year so you can probably laugh at that but um, that actually works out pretty nicely for me uh, so it tells me where the wind is going so if I head in a different direction a little arrow shifts around and I've got four four mile an hour wind from the northwest and it's a tailwind at the moment and then my time of day so that's an IQ app that one there which I find really useful go left 
Got a load of other features, all my timings. So this page I use for all my timings. Um, so I've got my average, my average speed, pretty slow because it's up and down. My speed, time of day, distance to the destination. So this is all the way, all the way around the route. Uh, time to destination, ETA destination, course point distance, time behind. So I'm about th nearly three minutes behind. Uh, I've been riding for three hours 36 and, sorry, riding for three hours six and since I started, three hours 36. And back here, heart rate, all the normal stuff. There's my performance condition, which I really like. It is, I think it's pretty accurate. Bit of information, ascent remaining. So that's the rest of the ride. I've got 4,400 feet of climbing to do. They're really good. Um, come on to here, there's my maps. So I've got my time and my next course point. Um, usual elevation things. So I've got my 10 second power there, which is the one I prefer. This is where I'm going up up there is Compton Abbas. Oh, there we go. Um, lap stuff. So just keep an eye on my averages. Some average speeds there, not particularly impressive. Because I keep stopping and talking to you a lot. All my course points, how far, what time I'm gonna get there, sorry, how long to get there, working on my current speed, and then back again into all my averages and so on. Um, so I've heard some people talking about the touch screen and saying well, what's that like? I've had no problems with it um, Only in really heavy rain Where you've got a drop that will go onto it and roll down then you do get some issues with it um, In the little flick screens a couple of times, but it's got to be really heavy rain to do that and It does it flick screens maybe a couple of times and it's it's I, li I live with it quite comfortably uh, I don't have any problem uh, with gloves fingers obviously it's fine with a touch screen um, even my relatively cold weather gloves uh, I can do it fine my big really thick gloves for minus five minus eight degrees um, I find that when I'm wearing those I can't do the screen doesn't just doesn't work but <laughs> that's reasonable I don't do much uh, riding in those conditions um, oh yeah other things weather um, so if I have a quick look again So if I scroll down here, you got my battery life different profiles and settings you can go into um, What I didn't say is for a route if you put in a normal GPX file You can get it to work out all the turning points. So it takes a little bit of time to work them all out So every turn point it gives you a cue so from a basic GPX file So you don't need a TCX file uh, which would have those with it uh, so normal GPX, it will work it out itself, which I don't think many other units do. Um, yeah, so into there, so that's the normal sort of settings. I scroll right, any notifications from the phone. Um, I can calibrate my calibrate stuff. There's my weather observed at that time. Yeah, I can look at the weather along here. Pretty good segment. Oh, you got, you got all the live segments. Minutecast uh, is a is an IQ app. It's has, obviously hasn't uploaded any data uh, there. Minutecast is, is I think really good in terms of particularly for wind. Uh, sorry, not wind. Uh, rain, telling you when the when the when the rain's coming. I find it really accurate. Uh, yeah, and it holds all your stats and navigation, all your history, all your stats and your power. It calculates the FTP and all that sort of stuff. And you can put workouts in there as well. There are your IQ apps. Anyway, what I'll probably do is there is another feature in here, another IQ app, which I use quite a lot. In fact, there are a couple of others which I use on a different profile, so I won't show you yet. I'll do a proper thing on it one day. But one of them is called W prime balance it does a calculation it's basically your, your anaerobic battery so if you get into your climbs uh, it will calculate how much battery life you got left really if you're on, on a climb and i found it that to be particularly accurate but shit in shit out so you've got to get there. there's a couple of number values you've got to work out um you can do it on something called cheetah yeah anyway i'll do it i'll do something about that and you can get all sorts of other iq apps which are data screens uh, differently laid out uh, I've got one which is three bars and those bars you can balance them uh, or set them up mins and maxes you can put all your zones in there and so you can see as you're working hard you can see your power going up your heart rates creeping up behind that and your cadence in there as well so loads of little things in there I don't use them all on the on my little on my Audax sort of uh, screen 
Anyway, I'll better go. Um, got a bit of time in hand at the moment. Um, what's the time? Quarter past eight. I'll be there at ten. Got about another hour of riding at the most. But I've got a couple of big climbs, so I'll better get on with it. about early morning on a Sunday everyone else is in bed maybe that's a good one this is Gillingham let me put it this way if you're a single bloke who likes running, this is a good place to live. Shaftesbury. Must remember, anything ending in Bury is on a bloody hill. There's a plane up there. All you can hear is a tractor though. But over there, on the horizon, is a wood. And out of that wood, I can just see an orange windsock. That's the airfield. Unfortunately, that means going up a hill. But hey, whatever. What an amazing, one of my favourite rides this year by a mile. Made by the weather, to be fair. But, uh, but the roads have been great, not too much traffic. Lovely little villages to go through and towns. Yeah. <laughs> Tubeless fail. Sealant all over. Piece of metal. Bugger. Switch back after switch back. Back wheel feels soft. Oops. Who cares? I got tunes in my ears. This is a nice little climb, though. Anyway, nearly there. I can smell coffee. Someone's overcooked it. Around that corner, through that fence, bits of car. You can see the tire marks and a bit of a skid, a bumper just about over there. And just the other side of the hill is basically the back of his car. <laughs> I don't think he flipped. You can see the wheel tracks all the way down. So he's just overcooked it. Nice place to do it though. Anyway, two minutes left and I'll be there. Should have bought a gravel bike, shouldn't you? So it's just me heading back. Chris is, uh, he's had enough. His bike is coated in mud. He had a blowout. Had to put a tube in for his tubeless fail. And then uh, had a, about three or four miles of mud to, to deal with, uh, I think he's threaders. So anyway, um, his missus has turned up and so he is off home. He's got a lift home. Um, Someone's off. It's a hell of a crosswind though. I wouldn't fancy uh, trying to take off in this. In a little thing like that. Anyway, my tubeless has survived, put a little bit more air into it. Um, but it's held actually throughout 
So we're off, um, yeah, about 66 miles home. Off with it. I am, I'm not, I wouldn't say I've bonked out, but I'm at about 83, 84 miles. But I, just, I just don't feel, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it at the moment. Oh, and I couldn't even be, I just thought I gotta stop. I gotta stop and get off this bike for a bit. I couldn't even choose somewhere decent. I've just got hedges all around me. I was gonna sit on that grassy bank. I know and eat something. I have to knock it out now. What I need, what I really, and I'm craving it, is a milkshake. Milkshakes are brilliant for a boost of energy, I think. I need a milkshake. I am fatigued. I am definitely fatigued. My performance condition, let's have a quick look. Minus six. So it started off bad at the start of the day. I'm pretty sure that's down to dehydration. Picked up back up to about zero, so I was actually okay. And I felt really good when I was up at the airfield. And now fatigue has come in. And I hit 80 miles. I just, I've just completely crashed. And I think it's because, um, because I was drinking last night. I had a bottle of wine. That's all I can think of. But uh, I've been eating okay. Uh, I've only brought one bottle with me, which is a little bit silly. I thought I was going to be able to fill up back here, but I've been conserving it. And for the last 10 miles, I've been out. So that's probably a big part to play in it. Probably a big part to play in it. Dehydration. So a mix of dehydration. Not enough energy. I've had malt loaves. I've had. I've, had a, I've been eating reasonably. Anyway. I'm about three miles from Yetminster and I just got to fill up the water there. It's a lovely place to cycle but it is tirelessly up and down, up and down around here. Um, your speed is right back and then you, then you race down but you can't race down actually because you need to be on your brakes because it's quite steep and then you're back up the next hill. So it's tiring now. I'm actually at about 90, 93 miles now. Yeah, so I've been struggling for the last 15 and I've got about 16 miles left to the next coffee stop but three miles until I can get some food in me. I'm craving a um, milkshake at the moment. Right, let's go. And I've already had my emergency gel. So, uh, so I'm running on fumes now. You know your car with this, with the uh, when they've got the computer inside the car in the engine, and when it all goes wrong, it drops into a get you home mode. That's what I'm in right now. I'm in my get me home mode. Just get me home. Not so what you need when you when you knock it out. Last thing I need is a shit track, which is going to end up. Hey, it's great fun. If I could be bothered. Oh dear, it's getting narrower. Right, it could be a pain in the ass. Oh, pretty woods. Pretty woods. Not pretty. Trouble with these tracks. You start on them and they look all right and they just get a little bit worse and a little bit worse and a little bit worse but now you're quite a long way into it and then they're a little bit worse and then they're just gnarly and muddy and just, and just crap and you're thinking hmm i got another kilometer of this or do i have to go all the way back and i know it's a big downhill and a big uphill oh i've just had enough i've just had enough On. Yeah, chickened out of that mud. <laughs> chickened out of that mud. Don't trust Garmin. 
people is, Chris found out, you can't trust Wahoo either. Uh, good route planning is really important. I missed that bit. Never mind. Slowed in. The trouble is, I'm now div navving around that route, but I'm having to stop because I'm not can't be bothered to set up my my Garmin. I might just set up use my Garmin, but uh, yeah. So I'm having to stop and look at my look at my phone. I think I use my Garmin. Yeah, I'll do that. Sense of humour failure after that. Having to go off that route, I then started. I didn't trust Garmin, so I started using my phone. <laughs> Don't trust these Garmins. They're shit. Do route planning. I've got to go up this hill. It's a nasty, nasty. <laughs> home, sense of humour loss, the end, I've had it, I'm not doing, <laughs> I'm not doing that again, next time there will be no bumps, all the way home, bumps, 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 all the way, headwind, all the way, crap roads, trails, <laughs> had enough, absolutely had enough. Which is a real shame because the route out was brilliant. I was absolutely loving that route outbound. So route planning is everything. It will make a ride or it will kill a ride. Uh, and that on the back end, the second half of that, absolutely killed. I'll do better next time.